book of Revelation chapter 2. Now, when I exposited the book of Revelation on Wednesday night, we, I, 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 I exposited the scripture, I exegeted it, whatever you want to call it, and uh, explained exactly what it meant. The literal meaning of the scripture, and I'm not going to take time to do that today because today is not an educational day. Today is an inspirational day. So tonight, if you'll come back, it will be very educational. This will be the fourth installment of a series that I started a few weeks ago on the great eternal reversal. The rich man and Lazarus. And I'm, exposit I'm expositing it, okay? I, I'm, I'm going through it verse by verse, and we're explaining it as we go. It's very educational. So if you like educational and you wonder, and this is where we're at tonight. Now, I'm just, I'll, get, I'll get where we're going here in a second. But I'm excited about tonight because I was up about till 3 o'clock last night preparing for tonight. I already had this morning ready, but I was preparing for tonight. The things I got into and I couldn't get out of. And, uh, and you might ask yourself this question, why in the world would the rich man go to hell and why did the Lazarus go to heaven? Well, I'm going to explain that to you tonight. People have wondered about that for years. Is it just because the man was rich? Was it just because the man was poor? So that means every poor person goes to heaven, every rich person goes to hell. No, that doesn't mean that at all. But I'm going to show you tonight and I'm going to tell you why the rich man went to hell and why anybody goes to hell. So you need to be back here tonight, okay? Be back tonight. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, thank God. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, I want you to understand this. In the context, this is talking about during the tribulation. The devil's not been cast out yet, but this still applies to us because we're in a warfare. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The power of his Christ. The, the power of of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. And here's the key scripture. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. One. Number two. And by the word of their testimony. And number three. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. But woe to the habitants of the earth and uh, the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows he hath but a short time. You may be seated. This gospel work. I want to get that real, real embedded in your heart. This gospel works. The blood of Jesus, the word of God, is absolutely your winning combination. And it doesn't just work inside the church. It works outside the church as well. Last year, uh, last week when I was in, a uh, week before when I was in Washington, D.C., I engaged many people on the streets. I witnessed to a lot of folk. And one night after leaving the Jefferson Memorial, Guess what I called Uber? I like to say that. Uber. Thank God it wasn't that guy that shot his Uber or whatever. You know, yeah, he shot his man. But it happens. It happens. And, and a lady picked myself and, and, and Brother David Morrow and his son up. There was three of us. And, and, and it was about, about 12 o'clock at night. And uh, we had been at the Jefferson Memorial. We'd been to a lot of places. And as we were driving, I asked the young lady, I said, Are, were you a race? She was Hispanic. So I said, and she said that they're originally from, I believe, El Salvador, but she was born in America. I said, are you uh, a Catholic? 
And she said, yes, yes, I am. And, and, I, and I kept trying to say things, and she understood very perfectly because she was raised here, and, uh, and I understood her. And I said, uh, uh, is there something wrong with you? Because you're not, are, are, are you, are, is there something going on in your life? And she said, I'll be honest with you, my head's about to burst. I've got these migraine headaches. And said, it's, it's just really, really, I can't, hardly, I can't hardly think and concentrate. And I said, okay, do you believe in the power of God? I knew Catholics do because I was raised a Catholic. She said, I do, I do. And I said, do you mind if we preachers pray for you? She said, I don't mind at all. And we prayed for her. And she thanked us with tears. And God moved in miraculous ways. You say, well, I thought it only happened in church. No, this gospel works outside the church. As a matter of fact, this is just a filling station. We come here expecting to see God, but you ought to see God every day you live. You ought to see God on your job. You ought to see God when you go to school. You ought to see God when you go to the grocery store. You ought to see God wherever you go. You ought to be seeing God because that's the mission field beyond these doors. And when they get in that mission field, he wants us to preach the gospel. He wants us to flesh it out. Uh, and he wants us to show the world that he is the son of the living God because he is. We have been covered by the blood. Not just in here, man. It's good to shout in here and happy in here and glory God in here. But guess what? You can glory to God out there too. If you know that you know that you know uh, that you've been saved and you know that you know that you've been blood washed and you know that you know uh, that your communion is with God through Jesus Christ your Lord uh, and you've been changed, uh, it'll give you a shout on Monday. Uh, you can shout on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Come back in here on Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and God is still God uh, every day of the week, uh, all day of the calendar. Amen. Been covered by the blood. It's a winning combination. Little fella got saved one Sunday night. Went to work on Sunday morning or, or Monday morning. He's back there working away. Singing that old spiritual. I've been covered by the blood. And the devil can't bother me. He's he been singing that all day long. Well, the guys that worked around him kind of got disgusted with him, got tired of hearing about the blood that ever came by the me. And so they went to the big boss who was sitting behind the big boss desk, and they said, big boss, we got a problem. So what's that? Said, 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 said uh, well, you know, the little guy out there, he, 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 he'd been, he, something happened to him, but he, he, he keeps singing about this blood, uh, and the devil can't bother him, uh, and it's driving us nuts. You ought to be driving people nuts. Amen. You ought to really be with the gospel. So the boss said, I'll take care of it. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. So he, he, he slipped out of the office. He went back in the back. He found that little guy just working away. And he could hear him as he came. I've been covered by the blood. And the devil came by the me. And man, he got closer. It got louder. It got closer. It got louder. And finally walked up on him. He's down this aisle. And he said, hey. And the little guy turned around and said, what is it, boss? He said, what you mean you've been covered by the blood and the devil can't bother you? You see, you got everybody confused. And everybody doesn't understand. What are you talking about? He said, it's real simple, boss. See, I went to church last night, and I got convicted, and I came to the altar, and I gave my heart to Jesus, and he cleansed it and washed it and washed me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when I got up this morning, I'm still saved, uh, and, and I'm still born again. Uh, and you know what I learned? I learned that the devil can't cross the bloodline. He can't cross the bloodline, uh, and I'm behind the bloodline, and the devil can't bother me. Uh, and, man, he just got real excited about it. You ought to get excited about the blood, Amen. And the boss said, let me ask you something. You say that you've been covered by the blood. The devil can't cross the bloodline. I got a question for you. What if 
the devil does cross that bloodline. What you going to do then? <laughs> Little fellas looked at him and said, let me tell you something, boss. Uh, he said, I've been covered by the blood. I'm behind the bloodline. Uh, and I got news for you. If that devil crosses that bloodline, uh, he'll be a saved devil. Amen. Uh, and I want you to know he ain't saved. He's not saved. He never has. Been. He will never be saved. Uh, he's forever locked away one day. Uh, but let me tell you something. The Bible said we have overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, I pulled back the covers of this book. Uh, and I found out there's not enough foul powers out of hell to keep me from the victory. Uh, and it doesn't matter what day it is. Uh, it doesn't matter what circumstance it is. Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I don't look to the barometer of circumstance. Uh, I look to this word. Uh, and I want you to know that I've got a right to shout and lift my hands uh, and say I've got the victory even when I don't even feel like it. Uh, because I've been covered by the blood. Uh, and the blood uh, has covered me. Uh, and the devil can't cross the blood. Line. He's no saved devil, never has been, never will be. Maybe he was from the beginning. I don't know. I guess he was, but, man, he lost it. Forget that once saved, always saved thing, man. He ain't never getting it back. Hello? But the fact is, that doesn't mean that he's going to lie down and go to sleep. See, the devil never sleeps, never slumbers. <laughs> I thought God didn't sleep or slumber. He doesn't either. <laughs> Trust me. You better thank God that God's on the scene all the time. You better thank God that God's with you all day long. You better thank God that God's with you not just on Sunday morning when you come in here and you begin to worship God and begin to feel his presence, uh, but when you're in the very the very belly of hell. And it may be on your job or wherever it's at, uh, and you've got all these foul spirits around you and devils and demons. you still got power over the devil uh, because God has given you power. But the devil wants to destroy your life. Do you know that? Do you know, understand that? Do you see what's going on in our nation? Do you see what's happening in our streets? Uh, do you see what's happening in our public school system uh, and all these things that keep, keep coming over the television uh, and everybody's wondering what is going on here man I can't figure it out I got to figure it out uh, there's a living devil on this earth uh, and, and Jesus revealed his plan his strategy uh, he said that he came to steal kill and to destroy uh, and then he revealed it further in the book of Revelation uh, it says that the devil hath come down to you having great wrath uh, because he has but a short time uh, you say, why? Uh, because the devil has a short time. Uh, why is it that Christian uh, begin, you know, in some churches, thank God not our church that I know of, uh, if it is, we'll have a talk about that. But in some churches, uh, some people can't even sit by one another. Uh, and this one's mad at that one, and this one's mad at this one, and this one's back in the corner talking about that one. Uh, why is that? Uh, because the devil knows he has but a short time. Uh, why is there such violence in our streets? Uh, it's because the devil knows he has but a short time. Uh, why? Why is he trying to turn us against one another and against people? Uh, I want you to know it's because the devil knows he has but a short time. Uh, how come he tries to keep you from praying? How come he tries to keep you from getting in this word? Uh, because he knows if you get in this word, uh, you'll have power beyond the power that he has. Uh, and I got news for you. Uh, you'll have the power to transform your mind uh, by the power of the word of God. Uh, this word of God can change you. Uh, it's not just any word. Uh, it's the word of the living God. Uh, and it says, I've been covered by his blood. By his blood. Oh, yeah. You keep your nose in that book. You keep your nose out of everybody else's business. Where'd that come from? I don't know. It wasn't in my notes, but I'm just telling you. Hello? You keep your nose in that book. You keep your nose out of that, that bad stuff, wherever that applies. If you keep your nose in the book, I want you to know you have power over the devil. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him. You know, the devil's trying to overcome you. See, there's a battle going on. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but there's a battle going on. But And in that battle, it's a spiritual warfare that we're in. Uh, and our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, the devil's not out for your good. He's out for your bad. Uh, he's not out just to try to 
you know, slow you down. He wants to stop you. Uh, he doesn't want to give you life. He wants to give you death. Uh, he'll make you a husband without a wife. Uh, he'll make you a father without a family. He'll make you a tramp without a home. Uh, he'll make you a man without a country. Uh, he'll make you a soul in eternity without the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, but I've come to shout it today, uh, and that is I've been covered by the blood. Uh, and the devil can't cross the bloodline. Uh, he can't have my soul. Amen. Oh, this is not some TV t game show. You want door number one, door number two, door number three. Oh, let me take it away. <laughs> I'll take door number one. Okay, behind door number one, let what do we have? You've got a life's you've got a month supply to the jelly club, okay? <laughs> you mean that's all I got? But in door number three, it was a brand new car. If I'd have picked number three, if I just picked number three. But there's good news for you. You see, you may have lost, uh, uh, and you didn't get the big prize, but there's some prize that's going to be waiting for you at the end, okay? You see, they give everybody a prize. I've never been on one of those things, but they always say that at the end. Everybody gets a prize. Everybody gets something, you know. You're going to get, you didn't win what you wanted to win, but you get some consolation prizes, okay? There are no consolation prizes. Uh, if the devil's got you, he's got you. Uh, if he shuts the door to mercy, and salvation uh, and you never walk back through that door he's got you uh, if he's got you in eternity he's got you forever uh, it's not a television game show uh, it's reality it's life uh, it's death it's heaven it's hell uh, and I want you to understand uh, that you will not be getting an invitation to come back and try it again uh, there's no mulligans uh, there's no coming back uh, there's no do overs uh, if you miss it you miss it for eternity uh, but the good news is you don't have to uh, you you can overcome the devil and every demon in your life uh, by the power of the blood. We're here to celebrate the blood this morning. We're taking communion this morning. Thank God for the strategy Jesus gives us against the devil. And it begins with the crimson flow of the blood of Jesus. That's where you start. And that's where you finish. Amen. Amen. Covered by the blood. You see, there's nothing in this universe that the devil hates more than the mention of the blood of Jesus. The devil doesn't even like you to whisper the blood of Jesus. I know some dead, dried up saints who don't like to hear it either. Amen. Turn around and look at somebody and say, man, he may be preaching to you because you haven't amen for day one time. You see... You see, the blood can cleanse you, give you power. They asked the little girl one time, trying to be smart, is there anything that God can't do? She said, yes, there's one thing God can't do. They said, what? God can't see my sin under the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's good news. You come in here and you say, man, I did some things this week. Man, I got some things. I got some baggage. I got some, I, 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 I pulled in some burdens. Uh, and those burdens are heavy because of some things I thought about this week, some things I did this week, uh, some things I said this week, uh, some things that, you know, that I shouldn't have but I did, some ways I should have not acted. Uh, and, and I just feel so bad in church. Guess what? You don't have to feel bad. Uh, you don't have to feel sad. Uh, you can leave here shouting the victory uh, because whatever's in your life, the blood of Jesus. Uh, it says if we confess our sin, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive our sin. Uh, and we know that the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, it cleanses us from all sin. Uh, and that means yesterday, today, and tomorrow uh, I have been covered uh, and I've overcome the devil by the blood. Notice that the scripture said that he's your accuser. It's not just that old bitter saint in the church that's accusing you. I didn't like a thing you just said, preacher. Well, neither did the devil, so classify yourself. <laughs> you shouldn't be bitter with people, at people, carrying old grudges for years, accusing people. That's what the devil does. He accuses the brethren day and night, 
day and night. And I told you when we was in the Wednesday night Sunday, uh, study that the devil, according to this, is really not on earth. Somebody said, the devil, he's after me. No, one of his demons, one of his imps, one of his minions is after you, uh, but not the devil himself. He's before God. He's accusing us day and night, day and night. And the Bible said, but the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That's how we overcome the devil. They overcame him by the blood. So every time the devil says, uh, you know what, oh, brother so-and-so, you, you know what the devil's doing? He's, 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 he's asking, he's coming to God on the basis of his justice uh, and he knows that justice should not allow sin in our lives uh, that justice should be there should be a penalty for it uh, well I got news for you there is a penalty for it uh, and it's Jesus Christ uh, as he hung on Calvary's hill uh, and he died and cried out it is finished uh, that is the payment uh, it's been paid in full devil and so he, he's, 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 trying to, he's trying to get to God by his justice. You know they deserve it. You know every one of them deserves hell. You know every one of them deserves to go to the pit where I'm going. But, you know, they sin, I sin, we all sin. Uh, and, that, and you know what? That's true. But they overcame him by the blood. Uh, they overcame him by the blood. The only way you're going to get to heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you won't get there by going to church. Uh, you won't get there by paying your tithe. Uh, you won't get there by singing the songs. Uh, you won't get there by doing anything physically uh, you've got to fall on your knees somewhere uh, and say I'm a sinner I need a savior uh, and Lord cover me with the blood uh, and God's son will cover you with his blood the great reformer Martin Luther he had a dream one night and in that dream he stood before the judgment bar of God and there was the accusing devil with the books were open. And right in front of him, the devil said, Martin Luther is guilty. And then he began to read the sins that were in the book. Do you know that you're accumulating a book? I never wrote a book. You're writing one every day. Every day. Everything is put in that book. Every sin that you commit is put in that book. And he said when he got down to the end, it was a multitude, a plethora of sins. Uh, and, and, and Martin Luther in his dream said it was a nightmare. He didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to do. And he knew he stood there guilty. And the devil said he's guilty. He didn't They and. The devil said, what do you have to say about that, Mr. Luther? Uh, and Mr. Luther said in that dream, he said, I am guilty. I am guilty. I am guilty of it all. But then he said, it hit me. The word of God hit me. Uh, that's that winning combination, the blood and the word. Uh, and the word hit him. Uh, and he said, all of a sudden, he said, I'm guilty. But I want you to know uh, I have confessed my sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me from my sin. Uh, and so he's made me whole. Uh, and he said, in that, Jesus stepped up and said, that's the truth. Uh, I vouch for him. Uh, he is mine. And I've covered him with my blood. Uh, let me tell you something. There's a blood, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ that cleanses from all sin. Uh, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Uh, and when sinners plunge beneath the flood, they lose all. Uh, they lose all. Uh, they lose all their guilt and stains uh, if they get covered by the blood. I said, I want to How does that happen? How could that possibly be? I've had people ask me, I'm telling you, some monsters. I don't even want to get into it. You don't know the things I've heard and the things I've seen. You wonder why I had nightmares at night? <laughs> you wonder why I jerk every now and then? <sighs> if you've seen all things, heard all things I've heard, and I mean that. And I've had monsters ask me, can God forgive me of my sin? And I had to tell them, yes, God can forgive you of your sin. Now, now the society will never forgive you. And that judge's not going to forgive you. And that jury's not going to forgive you. But I tell you what, Jesus will forgive you. You're going to prison for the rest of your life. But guess what? You can go to prison free. <laughs> Amen. Uh, free from sin. Free from the past. Free from the debt. Uh, he paid it all. And with all your heart, you get it right, right in there. I promise you, God's son will heal you. Uh, and he'll cleanse you and make you whole. Uh, 
And I'll say that to anybody. There's nothing outside of the reach of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, it flows to the lowest valley. Uh, it reaches to the highest mountain. Uh, it goes where no other power can go. Uh, it gets in the cracks and the crevices. Uh, it goes down the dark streets and the hell holes. Uh, it even gets in an old party one time in 1980. Uh, and it touched my life uh, and changed me for time and eternity. Uh, I have been covered by the blood. Oh, yeah, the devil despises this kind of a message. He's already telling some of y'all, he's too loud. <laughs> he's already telling some of y'all, he's preaching entirely too fast today. Get a, get a CD and slow it down. Put it on slow-mo. Get the message. The message. You see, there's nothing, nothing that the devil can do. Because the devil knows and you, and you should know, that's what I'm telling you, that the blood of Jesus Christ, it, it prevails over every sin. It prevails over hell. It prevails over darkness. Uh, it prevails over everything. Uh, and every time a sinner finds his way to that fountain, uh, though his sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Uh, you see, the devil hates me to say that, uh, but there's still power in the blood. Uh, I say there's still power in the blood. Uh, I said there's still power in the blood. Uh, I said there's still power. Power in the blood. And friend, I'm not talking about the blood of bulls and goats. I'm not talking about the blood of turtle doves or pigeons. I'm not talking about the blood of innocent babies that Herod killed with a butcher's blade or that the blood of Paul that soaked the dust of the Roman guillotine. I'm not talking about the blood that flowed in the in the battlefields in the north and the south in the Civil War. That's not the blood I'm talking about. I'm not even talking about the blood of John F. Kennedy. I'm not talking about the blood uh, uh, of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I'm not even talking about the blood of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, I'm talking about the blood of the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Uh, his blood uh, is able to cleanse us and make us whole. Amen. His blood. It's enough. It's enough. Not by any blood, but by God's blood. Son of God, God's only sacrifice, God's only remedy, God's only antidote for sin. And they overcame him. See, in 1949, one of the major denominations of this world declared, we will not have a slaughterhouse religion. Now, I wasn't around to hear that, but I've read it. Some of y'all were little kids in that day. But still yet. They publicly pronounced and denounced the blood. This is their quote. We do not believe in a slaughterhouse religion. And they took it out of their hymns. And they took it out of their songs. And they quit teaching it to the kids in Sunday, Sunday school class. Uh, they quit mentioning the blood. Uh, they stopped preaching the blood from the pulpit. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, if you ain't got blood, you ain't got a gospel. Uh, you take the blood out uh, and all you've got is two black covers uh, because the blood flows from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, and there's only one remedy for sin. It's the blood. Uh, what can wash away my sins? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, what can make me whole again? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, it's the blood that's going to make you white. Uh, it's the blood that's going to cleanse you right. Uh, it's the blood that's going to make you spit white. Uh, it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he will purify you, make you holy, uh, and change you for time and eternity. The blood. The blood, the crimson flow of blood. See, if your theology can't fit the blood in, then I want you to know you can't fit Christ in. If you can't fit Christ, then you can't fit heaven in. <laughs> Nothing can wash away your sins. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm here to tell you, that's what's going to wash you white. That's what's going to make you right. 
That's what's going to save you, sanctify and purify you and set you on your road to glory. Uh, and quit looking for a bloodless gospel and know that it's the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you need to grab a hold of the blood-bought message of Jesus Christ uh, and say, it's for me. Uh, and, and you know, every time you do it, it puts the devil on the run. Uh, and you can kick him as he goes. Uh, it gives you power over every fiery dart out of hell. Uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, gives the church power. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want the blood. I want the blood. I don't call it a slaughterhouse religion uh, there is no remission of sin except through the blood that's what we're here to celebrate this morning the blood okay I better quit <laughs> I gave you the winning combination but I only gave you one punch I gave you my right I'll get you my left later I got a feeling if I quit right here, y'all might go out here and say, man, he's really preached good this morning. <laughs> if I go on for another 30 minutes, I won't hear nothing but complaints. <sighs> the blood. Come back to the nails. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ, it's a mythical story. It's a true story. Had you been there that day, I don't know which crowd you would have been in. Crucify him. Crucify him. See, every day people live without Christ. You know what they're doing? They're saying, crucify him. And I want to say this, and not to throw any condemnation on you, I'm just telling you, when you willfully sin against this book and against God, and you know what's right, and you constantly, I'm not talking about something you're struggling with. I'm talking about you just, even when you're struggling with it, it's still sin. And every time you do it, you're saying, crucify him. I know that I shouldn't be doing this, but I don't care. Just crucify him. His blood. Will, no, let me tell you something. Grace is not cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. It cost God's son his life to keep you out of hell. Now, I've given this illustration time and time again, but you've got to get this. It's not your good works. It's not what you do. It's not how, you, how good you dress. It's not whether or not you, you, know, you do all the right religious things. You've been born in a leper colony. We're all born with leprosy, okay? We're all dying with leprosy. We're dying with sin. You understand that? And it doesn't matter how good you are in that leper colony. You may be the best leper in the leper colony. Uh, you may be a philanthropist uh, in, a, in a leper colony. Uh, and you may just be able to, you know, help all the lepers. Uh, you give to the lepers. Uh, you pick up the lepers. You give them water. You do everything. But if you don't get a cure, you're going to die with leprosy. You can be the best person in the whole wide world, but if you don't get covered by the blood, you will die with sin because the judgment of sin, the minute that you're conceived in your mother's womb, uh, it hangs over you. And thank God if the, pe if the babies die, they, bu they die in the Lord because God said, suffer the children to come to me for such is the kingdom of God. They're innocent. But once we pass that time of innocence, don't know when it is, it's when you begin to understand that you're sinning, that you're a sinner, you need a Savior. For some it's at five, some, for some it's at ten, for some it's at twelve. I don't know. Now don't give me this issue. I'm 30 years old and I still don't know. Yeah, you do. You've lived long enough. But you haven't yet begun to live till you get covered by the blood. Now that's giving you a way out, and for those that are covered by the blood, that's to give you an encouragement today. Because I know that the devil is out to destroy you, and he doesn't just come against you, you know, in, in, in ways that sometimes you recognize. You know, he doesn't just show up with a pitchfork and red underwear on and say, I'm the devil, I'm coming to get you. Now, sometimes it works. Somebody said God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Well, the devil works in mysterious ways, his devilish ways to perform. Sometimes he uses our kids to get us so discouraged and so down and so out. We stop praying. There's a lot of things he uses. Might use your wife, might use your husband. 
But many times my wife and I started getting into a little hissy. Wives throw hissy fits. Wives throw hissy fits. Y'all better not say one word to her. But in the middle of it, I said, hey, hold on, baby. Look, man, this ain't right. This is exactly what the devil wants. He wants us to fight. Let's don't be used of the devil. She said, speak for yourself, you demon. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. But I'm saying, you got to recognize it. Your battle is not a physical battle. You're not fighting with somebody in the church. You're not fighting with somebody on your job. You're not fighting with the people around you. Sometimes God, the devil uses those people, uh, and sometimes we allow the devil to use us. Amen? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too safe for that. Well, I got a message for you, and that is sometimes we get weak and sometimes we get carnal, and the devil can use you. But a lot of times I've had to pray through, but a lot of times I had to go to somebody and say, I'm sorry, forgive me. I was in the flesh. So I'm just telling you, that's what the devil's trying to do, destroy your life. To you quit having faith in God, that you quit believing his word, you quit going. You stop all that even has the form of godliness and just go with the flow and let go. But let me tell you something, that river's flowing, but it's flowing the wrong way. If you let go of all the support systems, which is the word of God and the blood of Jesus Christ, you're letting go of your life because if you just go with the flow, you will float down to eternity without God and you'll go over the waterfall never to be seen again. But if a man, a woman, a boy or a girl, if something in their heart says, I want to live for God, I want to be faithful, I want to be holy, I want to live like God wants me to live, I don't care how much you've done in your past, if you'll get a hold of this blood, the blood to give you power and that power will be over all the power of the enemy we've overcome the devil you see we've already overcome the devil so why are you letting him mess you up in your, in your, in your life every day trust him believe him and lean upon him now does everybody have elements today 